if I start with some point, and there was my a0, comma b0. So that may lie on, on this uh, level curve here, maybe out here. But the idea is that uh, when I look at this point here, and if I take the gradient, the gradient at this point is a vector. So that's something that points somewhere. Now I put it here, and it turns out that the gradient, the negative gradient, points inwards here. So um, I can go in this direction here. That will, that will uh, tend to make the function smaller. So if I take a small step here in this direction here, so they say that this is my alpha times uh, the gradient. Here, I go on direction, I get to this point here. Now, this point here, the function has a value. I can draw the level curve, get to this, and then I can do the same thing here. I take the gradient at this point, and I move a little further down, and then maybe I get to uh, a point here, and I do the same again. Take the gradient at this point, so this, this would be my point here a1 comma b1 this will be my point a2 comma b2 here 3 comma b3 and uh, I keep going like this and at each step here I get closer and closer to the minimum so that that's the idea behind a gradient descent that you uh, go from these level curves you keep going stepwise downwards until you get closer and you get closer and closer to the uh, minimum value. <coughs> so if you look at the if you look at the uh, notebook here I ha I have uh, here wait I have to share again. I have to share my screen again, I guess. Here we go. Can you make it better? Yeah. So uh, I, I put up uh, the Python notebook uh, as, as, uh, as a document that you can uh, download uh, and you can run this uh, code here. So here is the um, here is the uh, gradient, the definition of the gradient. So we're just using the formula that we uh, derived here. Uh, I take uh, I have my points x i comma y i. That's my data points, and I simply compute the gradient uh, for each of these. So minus two times yi minus a plus b times xi. That's the first coordinate. The second coordinate is the uh, same thing, but multiplied by xi. And so I can take those into an a, and I can take the mean of these, and that, that's the gradient. The gradient is this average. And so uh, that, that gives me uh, a way to, for each, uh, each point a comma b to compute the gradient. I start here, this thing here at the point zero comma zero, and uh, I do this thing I, I described a thousand times, and uh, I get this sequence of points by doing that. You can you can you can try to run that uh, yourself once you have downloaded the the uh, Notebook. So uh, what we get is uh, from this uh, procedure here, we get these uh, values. This is the value for a, and uh, this well, this is a, and this is the value for b that we get after a thousand uh, steps of this uh, process. You can see here that 
uh, the p values they are uh, they're they're constant here the the a values are still a little bit uh, varying but it's up to up to uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. up to nine decimal points. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's the same. So so it's very close to uh, being uh, as as uh, precise as we can get. So we take these uh, values as our uh, a and b, and that is the line that fits these points the best. So that that's the through the definition of uh, of what we may mean by fitting uh, we find this line here and and drawn it here and so you can see how uh, how well it fits there you can see that some of the points in fact are on this uh, on this line so how the process works to uh to, um, linear regression in uh, in two variables and it's exactly the same in in more than two variables if you can't draw it so that's why we're doing two here so, if you're not done with doing um, econometrics or econometrics, we'll be done now. We will be happy. Uh, but uh, we're doing machine learning, here, so it's prediction that matters here. So, uh, what what does it mean? That means if somebody gives me a new data point here, I want to predict what is the. Somebody gives me a, an x value here. So I want to I want to uh, pr produce a y value. I want to predict what is the value corresponding to this x value. So uh, well, how would I do that? I would go up to the line and I'll look at the point here on the line, and then I'll go and see this is predicted. Prediction. Uh, of y value. So the the um, going to say the 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 way we evaluate whether this is a good model or not would be how well does it predict uh, when when somebody comes and gives us new uh, new x values how well does it predict the actual y values. So this is this is what uh, what we're interested. We're not, we're not so interested in finding a line that goes to all the data points. We're interested in finding something that we can use to predict new things. So uh, this is uh, a very interesting point about machine learning, and it's uh, one of the uh, really uh, th big problems that people have been working on for a very long time. That if we our our data points and we uh, make a uh, model, we fit a model to it, like here we fit this this line, uh, then it's not for sure that this, uh, that this line is going to do a good job of predicting things. So we might have found a line very, very good at fitting the uh, data we have, but it may not be very good at predicting. So if this is a new data point, uh, it may not it may not give us a very good value. So uh, this is uh, this is a problem that uh, that is prevalent in machine learning, and there's a lot of, of work <coughs> trying to figure out how to uh, how to um, get get this get rid of this problem. I don't, at least you can't get rid of it, but try to um, a little less severe. So. Um, what we are going to do is, uh, the, or what one way to try to estimate how well is is a model at predicting. What we can do is we can take the. Um, and Neil, sorry to interrupt. Uh, there is a question by Tejas. Uh, okay. Tejas, do you want to unmute and ask the question yourself? Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, uh, hello, Professor. Um, so in, in, in the method that you just showed, like, so there was a multiplier that you used, like, so how do we go about determining that? I think it was 0 0.01. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, learning rate. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of the, uh, 
art of learning. You, you, you can play around with different learning rates. Uh, sometimes you will get a, if you take a, a large learning rate, so suppose instead of taking a C.1, I took uh, 100. Mm. Uh, what you would find is in your your um, your process does not converge. Let me try to show it to you on board again. So uh, I should. Uh, you see that? Can you see the board? Yeah. Okay. So so what happens if you take a very large value uh, of alpha here, right? So so you start. Let's say you start from here now. So what happens is you take a large value from, of, of, uh, of alpha. That means that you're going to end up over here. Cool. And if you do the same, go from this one and take your large value, you might end up here. And so you can see that you actually have not, uh, you have not made your value smaller. Cool. So by taking a large value, you may, you may be going back and forth between a small value and a large value, you'll never, you'll never actually get closer to this point here. So you sort of uh, alternate uh, back and forth. And that's why it's uh, important to not take that uh, learning rate to be too large. So if you take it, if you take it, uh, if you get something that doesn't converge, uh, cool. then you should take a smaller one. So it is kind of a, a, a uh, I would say it's a little bit of a, of a trial and error. There are ways to um, actually um, take learning rates that are not constant, but get smaller as you get closer and closer to the minimum. So, so Professor, would there be a point where after a certain value, it's not going to give us a better, like, I guess, value, like, say, after a certain learning rate, like it's point one, yeah. and zero, zero one is not going to make any difference. That's exactly the uh, that, that can exactly right. And that can definitely happen, uh, and and uh, so there are ways to uh, to actually make the uh, learning rate. So so as you get closer and closer to the minimum, uh, then you would uh, often like to have smaller learning rates. You take small steps there. And so you can you can make a learning rate that sort of gradually declines as you get closer to the. But but in this case here it's it's fine because you, you also what happens is the gradient itself gets smaller and smaller as you get closer and closer to the minimum. So so in some sense it, it the gradient itself uh, makes it makes uh, makes it. Uh, Converge or at least attempt to converge, but but it, it's always uh, if if uh, the first thing you 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 would do if if something does not converge is make your learning rate smaller. Smaller. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, back to our thing here. So this is actually something you could uh, you could try to um, to um, experiment with. Uh, you could try to uh, just want to make it bigger. What about just the uh, page? No, no, it's it should be uh, the slide show should. Oh, I see. It is a weakness point for me. Yeah, it's not here. <laughs> no, that's the it's because of all the rest. Okay. Um uh, so yeah, so so one thing